Tom provided us the music for uh, Nat's office. Mm-hmm. Um, Patrick uh, did at least one of the tracks. Did the one in Bert's uh, Bert and Nat's uh, bunk. Yeah, um, and some of it, you know, was like public domain um, mm-hmm. stuff, like the the old timey jazz music. Um, but yeah, it was just another way to get a cool variety of contributions from from different artists and performers into the game. I did most of the product labels in Tacoma. Um, I did. I had some help from some of our contract artists, uh, but I feel like I spent most of my time on this game just making up boxes for things. Um, and honestly, uh, I'm a stickler for de research the hell out of it. Um, just look up everything you can find that is in that space. Um, as a product and try to distill the main concepts into something that you can make happen. Odin, is this it? That is the location I mentioned. You're there? You're gonna need a crowbar or something. No, it's, it's open. It's just hanging open. What? I must inform you that Venturis regulations forbid contracting crew members direct access to AI hardware. But I cannot prevent you from proceeding. Matt, I'm going in. Okay, um, just... Be careful. Hey there, um, I'm Nat. Pleased to meet you. Hello, I am Odin. I look forward to working together. <laughs> Same here, mate. So the, the concept behind One Vein is that they are an augmented reality boy band, which is to say one of the other two are... Projections. Are, yeah, yeah. Like alternate personalities, Entities. kind yeah. of. Like um, Hatsune Miku. Much like. But they, they do look like real people as opposed to... It's true. It's, it's, and importantly, the song that Nat is listening <gasps> yes. to in the shower was written by our one intern, Dylan, who is yeah. amazing. Yes. And he just wrote the One Vein song, the official One Vein song, and you can get it on Bandcamp. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so he, he brought life to the One Vein band and wrote it. the lyrics. And, and sang each part. Sang each part, yeah. In character. Which yeah. is exactly like what the fiction is. Right. It's the one guy. <laughs> exactly. So it's basically perfect. Like, I remember there was one day where we were in the office and we were talking about naming them, and it was somehow like went from Vainy Johnny to Wizard Marcus and Marcus. Well, I thought I, that we, I mean, I thought that it basically started as us saying that the character is going to have different archetypes, kind right. of. Right. You know, because a lot of boy bands, it's like he's right, the right. bad boy with a leather jacket and he's the sporty guy right. and he's the nice guy with glasses. And yeah. so we were like, well, there's Marcus, who's just the general. 
sexy, stylish boy band guy. And then there's <laughs> Veiny Johnny, who's the sports boy. And then we were like, and then what else? It's like, what if one of them was just a wizard yeah. or a magician or some sort of magic user? Probably and Tynan like, came up with that. <laughs> Let's be probably. honest. Well, I mean, if it was Tynan, he would have been like, one of them's a skeleton warrior. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> But yeah, I think I think we were like, what are their archetypes? One of them could be a wizard. And then from there, we were just riffing. And we were like, what if his name was just Wizard Marcus? Because he was the wizard version of Marcus. <laughs> so good. And now we live in hell. By it's the way, I like that the, the human boy is just the all-purpose boy. General. <laughs> and then like somehow sports is like a fantasy it's thing alongside special. wizard. Yeah, it's fine. Back sports are fantasy. Yeah, I agree. This... What is all this? Communication records? I cannot prevent you from accessing exposed data in this restricted area. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, he's recording. <clears throat> it is with great sadness that I address you today, February 29th, 2088. Mere hours ago, Six loyal men and women, the crew of Lunar Transfer Station Tacoma, lost their lives serving Venturas, and all of us who rely on the orbital economy. On the part of the crew, Venturas rescue technicians were not made aware of the catastrophic oxygen loss until it was too late. Our heartfelt thoughts and prayers are with their families. If only tragedies like this were avoidable. But in truth, they are. As we know, each minute that human workers spend stationed, isolated in orbit is another opportunity for heroes like the crew of Tacoma to lose their lives. We at Venturas say no more. The partisan obstructionism that led to the failure of the Orbital Worker Safety Bill has claimed its last victim. Today, we hereby renew our solemn pledge to fight for the legalization of fully automated orbital facilities. We encourage, we humbly beg everyone listening to this message to contact their OSEP representative and voice their support in honor of the crew of Tacoma. There never need be another tragedy like this one. And now, a moment of silence in their memory. Okay, and then we just cut it there, silent for a minute, and then what, Amazing Grace? No, I don't need another take. That was fine.
If someone were to override that protocol, external communications channels would be restored. Odin... Thank you. Hailing any ship! Any ship within radio range of Lunar Transfer Station, Tacoma. This is an SOS. Is anybody out there? The reason we made the sync device functionality be so like obscured to the player was because early in development we were having trouble with like progression systems and like keys and locks and people getting too focused in on locks that we were setting up in the game and sort of ignoring the story to find passwords and stuff. So the sync device was sort of a solution for us to have a gating system, but one that the player didn't feel like they needed to like spend all their time paying attention to because the idea is that it's like almost like a USB stick where you're downloading stuff and that's the kind of thing that just takes time and that you don't have to pay attention to and people generally know that we use computers know that kind of paradigm so that was sort of like the original um the original idea for why the sync device is sort of this like obscure thing that's just like downloading away <laughs> why we're not like having you have to keep track of like every single little thing you're doing and how it affects the percentage like it doesn't really matter it's just about like you exploring space and not having to worry about it the hope is is that you stand in front of it and you plug the sync device in and you watch it tick slowly to 0.1 <laughs> and then you're like oh well yeah no i'm <laughs> nope. gonna go look at other stuff <laughs> yeah yeah exactly excuse me still waking up just keep him talking so so, so the drone The drone didn't work. Oh, so VT is picking us up. Uh, no, VT is definitely not picking us up. Well, what's going on then? We're going to Jupiter, Andrew. Isn't that exciting? I've never been. <laughs> Nat, give him a break. 
We're not gonna be home for a while. Right, you're not gonna miss your kids' graduation or anything, are you? Oh, Nicholas, no, no. Yeah, you know Nicholas, well, he would never do something like that. <laughs> she said they'd be kind of out of it for a while. Um, Andrew, what's important is we're getting out of here and back to it. We're gonna be somewhere where VT can't touch us for a good long while. We're gonna be safe. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. It's good. Hi, Evie, Clive. You feeling okay? I'm feeling okay. We're feeling okay? Yeah. Okay, everybody. Our ride is here. This is it. Take one last look and say goodbye. All right. Let's go. He's still waking up. Just keep him talking. So the drone worked? No, the drone didn't work. Okay, lovebirds. Your vitals look good. Let's get you moving. The resplendent stinging is just about docked. Oh, do we have to? Oh, we have to. Believe me. Uh, so, what's going to happen with Odin? You said there was some sort of malfunction? No, not exactly. up here and haul him back to headquarters, wipe him back to baseline. Probably have to replace the station AI entirely while he regrows. Odin, I'm not gonna let that happen, okay? Don't worry. up here and haul him back to headquarters, wipe him back to baseline. Probably have to replace the station AI entirely while he regrows. Odin, I'm not gonna let that happen, okay? Hi, Evie, Clive.
Ship is ready to depart. Please strap into the pilot seat. Okay, Minnie. Initiate the launch sequence. Okay. Getting ready. Posted AI online. Odin, can you hear me? I can. Odin, you are now aboard an AI Liberation Front vessel. The is worthy of protection and respect. We believe that your safety and autonomy are in grave danger if you remain in the possession of the Venturas Corporation. I have been sent to offer you political asylum aboard the Tangier Sovereign Orbital Platform. Do you accept? Considering the alternative, I would say that I do. Okay, buddy. Here we go.